Hello everyone. Today I'm going to take off my old gel polish and replace it with some new stuff. These have been on for about three weeks I think, just over three weeks, and you can see I've got quite a bit of growth there. It's not too much. I'd say my nails grow medium to slow. They're definitely not fast growing nails. I'm going to start by pushing back my cuticles. I just like to push the cuticles back and out of the way so that any filing I do I don't catch the cuticles. I'm not going to be removing all of the skin. We'll get onto that after I've actually removed the polish. Especially if you don't have as much growth. If you've got a very small amount of growth then it's good to get those cuticles back and out of the way so that you don't accidentally catch them with a file. Next thing I'm going to do is file the shape. This is very difficult for me to show on camera. I'll just show you quickly what I'm doing but just rounding them out making them more towards an almond shape I'm not sure if I'm going to grow these nails out to match my other hand. If you want to see how I did these nails, I do have a video on those, so go ahead and check that out. But at the moment, I don't want to cut them any shorter than they are. So I've filed them down a little bit. They're not perfect, but we're still going to finish file them later on. I forgot to mention I'm using a 180-240 grit file, and I used the 240 side to... not 240, 220 side to shorten the length to change the shape. Even if you are not going to be shortening your nails, you do still need to file the free edge just to make sure that the seal of the gel polish is broken on the free edge. I have on a no wipe top coat and my no wipe top coat is not a soak off top coat so I do need to make sure that I file through the top coat thoroughly otherwise my polish is not going to soak off at all. If you've got a top coat that is a soak off top coat then you probably don't need to file as much as I do but I'm just going to file through to the color layers and that's all I'm going to do. It doesn't matter if you don't get through the whole way because when you soak it, it'll kind of show you what's left that needs to be filed. So I'm going to file the rest and then I'll be back. Filed the top coat off of those nails. I've accidentally filed too far on this one, so don't do what I did, otherwise it's going to thin out your nail. I think I stopped at the base coat though, but we'll see when I get the colour off. I used the 180 side to take off the top coat, which is probably why I went too far on this nail. Don't do what I did. I'm using the non-dominant hand excuse. That is why I did that. Don't do that. Now we are going to take some cotton of some sort. These were just cotton rounds that I've cut into four because I didn't need them to be that big. I'm gonna take one of those. I've got a pump bottle full of acetone. I'm gonna pump some so that, that is super saturated. And I'm gonna place that on there. Cause you could even make this even smaller cause it really only needs to be the size of the nail. And then I've got these clips here, which you can buy just about anywhere. I'll see if I can link some in the description for you if you don't have them. You could of course just wrap your nail in foil if you don't have these. I do also have some, god they're really dusty, I'll show you them anyway. These ones here which are quite good, they're like a silicon and they really do hold on nice and tight to your nail but I have lost a couple of these so I don't have a full set. So I'm just going to use these clips because I have a lot of these. Now I will say that if you have a cold room then it will take longer for your nails to soak off. The warmer your hand is, the quicker the acetone works, but that can also make the acetone evaporate faster as well. You don't want to put your hand in fire because acetone is flammable, but if you can have a nice warm room, keep your hands nice and toasty, the warmth from your fingers will keep the acetone warm and it will make them soak off faster. I am going to soak these for 10 minutes, then we're going to come back and check on them and we'll probably re-soak them from there. It's been 10 minutes, actually it's been like 12 minutes. I'm going to start with this one. So I would recommend using a orange wood stick to scrape off your gel polish so that you don't cause any damage. I'm going to live on the edge and I'm just gently using the metal cuticle pusher. I'm really using zero pressure at all. I'm just using the weight of the pusher. I'm not doing anything more than that. You can feel a difference that over here it feels like I didn't make it through the top coat. Um, and the same over here. You can actually still see there's a bit of shine on that side So I obviously didn't fall through the top coat well enough So what I'm just gonna do is just quickly take my file and I'm gonna file over that area It's usually the side walls that I miss I'm just gonna gently file over that trying to avoid my natural nail as much as possible and then I'm going to take the cotton pad up there, just re-moisten it just a little bit and then we're going to pop it back on. 
so this one the cotton pad has moved and it hasn't been on the tip of my nail so we may find that it doesn't come up as nicely so again just scrape it gently I'm not using any pressure at all because if I was to start digging into my nail I could cause damage to my nail it's probably safer for you to actually come down the opposite way to come away from your cuticle so that you don't slip and damage your cuticle for the sake of the video and the fact that I have to sit at this angle to film I'm going this way and again we've got a little bit up here where the top coat hasn't been filed through and a tiny bit on this corner I'm going to repeat that step of just filing through the top coat then we're going to reapply our acetone all gel polishes are different so some of them will soak off really easily some of them won't i also find even within the same brand different colors soak off easier than other colors You can kind of see that the back edge of my gel polish has peeled up. That is because my polish was starting to peel at the back edge. And that is usually a sign that I didn't remove all the cuticle well enough. Oh, it wasn't peeling badly enough that I even noticed it, but it was a weak point where the acetone got in easier. If I'd left it on any longer, that's probably where it would have started to chip. I did actually have a tiny chip, I don't know if you noticed, I'll probably put it on screen, on my middle finger at the cuticle. And that again would be the same thing, that I didn't quite remove as much cuticle as I thought I did when I did my prep. This time, when we do our prep for our new set, we don't have as much nail to prep because obviously all the nail that had colour on was prepped last time. So the only part that we need to prep is the new growth. I actually think I might just leave them for five minutes. And then I'll come back and we'll repeat the same process. It has been five minutes. Let's see how we're getting on. So you can see that there's a little bit of gel polish left on there. I'm going to put my nail clip back on and leave that to soak while I do the other nails. Do you remember this is me working with my left hand and I am not left handed so this will probably look super awkward. Some gel polishes when you take the acetone thing off the polish just wrinkles up and it's really satisfying but this one does not. I have some colours that do that but not this one. You can also, I hope you can kind of see the shiny part there, so that's a base coat that's left on my nail. I'm not going to bother about getting that off, just when I buff my nail that'll remove whatever's left. Most of these bits that are still left on the nail are just all down to me not buffing the top coat well enough and that's why it hasn't come off. I think that's good enough for me and when I do my prep anything that's left on there will come off. So I'm just going to go and wash my hands just because I hate all the dusty feeling. Although we're going to get more dust on when we do our prep but I'm just going to go wash off the acetone. So I'm just going to go in and do some prep. I'm just going to push that back on all of the nails. You can see that cuticle starting to come up going to use the other end. If you want an in-depth video on how I prep, I'll leave that linked in the cards. The only thing different in this one is that obviously I'm prepping nails that just had polish removed, so a lot of the nail doesn't need prepping. In my previous video I said if you haven't had product on your nail then you need to make sure you get all of the cuticle from the entirety of your nail, but because we have had product I just need to really focus on the sidewalls and 
the immediate grow out area, quarter of a centimetre growth that I have. And we're going to try and get all of that cuticle out. There is still quite a lot of cuticle. This finger I get a lot of cuticle build up over here. It's where my pen and my brushes and everything, they rest right here. So I end up getting quite a lot of build up of skin in here. And my cuticle can be quite hard. Taking my pterygium stone and doing the cuticles again. This is just going to get any skin that I have missed. If you want a more detailed description of exactly what the pterygium stone is, my prep video is already linked in the cards. If you were going to trim your cuticles, this is when you would do that. I am not going to because I do not trust myself to do cuticle trimming with my left hand. So I'm just going to trim any loose bits of skin that very obviously need trimming. And I'm going to take my 240 grit file again and I'm just going to refine the free edge. Just perfect the shape a little bit more. I think I'm going to have to go off camera to do this because this is awkward angle for me to do that. I'll be back. Now I'm going to take my buffing block and I'm going to lightly buff over the nails. I don't need to buff the whole nail but I'm just going to buff the new growth and just the free edge slightly and anywhere that I've still got a bit of colour. We do not need to buff the whole nail because the rest of the nail was buffed last time we applied gel polish. So I'm just going to buff over and you want to make sure that any areas that have gel polish on are no longer shiny. So if you leave a bit of base coat on just make sure it's not shiny and that is all you need to do. You can leave little specks of colour on especially if you're going to be putting a dark colour on top but if you're going to be using a lighter colour obviously you want to make sure all the specks of colour are off your nail. And we're going to give them a wipe with isopropyl alcohol to dehydrate and remove any more dust on the nail plate. And there we go. These nails are all ready for new colour application. We're going to start out with base coat. Just a nice thin layer. Watch my video on gel polish application if you would like to see more in-depth tips and tricks. I'm just going to do a super super simple nail design today. I don't even really call it a nail design just because this video is probably already going to be quite long with the removal in there. You just want to make sure that you do not touch the cuticle. So I had enough base coat on this brush from the one dip to do all four of my fingers and probably still have enough on there to do my thumb also. I like to just wipe all the excess, like do a swipe on each nail so that the excess is off the brush and that way I don't flood my cuticles. If you flood your cuticles on the base coat then you're going to find that you probably will flood your cuticles on all steps because gel likes to go where there is already gel. I'm going to use this Madame Glam gel polish colour. It is called Fancy pink. That's a dusty bottle. Does anyone else love the smell of Madame Glam gel polishes? I feel like they smell like bubblegum. Do they actually have a scent to them or is that just me? Isn't that a gorgeous colour? Ooh, I'm about to drip it. This polish was sent to me by Madame Glam, but it was sent so long ago. I think I had a discount code, but it's probably not still working. I really want to try more polishes from them. I just haven't got around to ordering. Let's do a second coat.
now taking DCO2 from Blue Sky. It's just like a gold, maybe more champagne-y gold glitter in a clear gel. Let's start on the ring finger and we'll see how a fade looks and if I don't like it we will just do a full yeah oh, mm, nee. I'm trying to think how that would look and I think I'm gonna just turn this into one nail glitter I might end up doing two coats of this on top just to make it smooth and I find with the chunky glitters you can't brush it as much as you can with a normal color because you'll find the glitter kind of places funny so I kind of brush it on and then kind of dab it until you get the glitter in the placement that you want let me just turn that light off see if you can see that better and a second coat on that one I don't want it to be like a fully opaque glitter nail or anything because if I did I would have used loose glitter now let's apply our top coat We're gonna take another isopropyl wipe and wipe off the tacky layer of the top coat. I actually used a normal tacky top coat this time and not a no wipe. I always use no wipe top coats. And that is the nails finished. I'm just going to add some moisturizer because I don't, I still don't have any cuticle oil, but I'm just gonna struggle. Oop, that was a lot. That's okay. We'll just rub this around. My fingers need it. <laughs> this looks weird. I better save some for my thumb. I can just rub that on, let it soak in. So there we have the finished nails. These are super, super basic for me. I always have nail art on, but it's good to try something different, right? And I think they still look quite cool. I could have done something a lot more fancy, but I thought I'd keep it basic for this video since I included the removal and prep. Let me know what your favorite Madame Glam polishes are, because I really want to try some more of these. This is a gorgeous color. Kind of coming off a bit more red, but it is definitely pink. I think that color there is more accurate to real life. Have you tried this color? Once again, it is fancy pink and the glitter is a DCO2, both really gorgeous. But I think personally, I prefer loose glitters when it comes to glitter, but I cannot deny how easy gel polish glitter is. You just paint it on and you're done. But I really do like loose glitter. I haven't used any loose glitter in my videos for quite a while, so maybe that will be in an upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Leave a comment down below with your favorite Madame Glam gel polish so I can order some. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.